Dear learners, we are moving to lesson 3, Accounting Conventions. I am Siba. In this lesson, we are going to deal with Convention of Consistency, Convention of Full Disclosure, Convention of Materiality and Convention of Conservatism. An accounting convention refers to common practices which are universally followed in recording and presenting accounting information of the business entity. Accounting conventions are followed like traditions in a society or customs in a society. Accounting conventions are evolved through regular practice over many years as well as consistent practice that is continuous practice of the same method over many years to facilitate uniform recording in the books of accounts. Important conventions are Convention of Consistency, Convention of Full Disclosure, Convention of Materiality and Convention of Conservatism. Let us study first convention that is Convention of Consistency. It means that same accounting principles should be used for preparing financial statements year after year while charging depreciation on fixed assets or while valuing unsold stock. Once a particular method is used means it should be followed year after year. For example, if straight line method is used by an organization in 2011, then it should be followed in 2012 and in 2013. Then only comparison will be possible. If one organization has valued closing stock in this method like cost price or market price whichever is lower. If in 2011 if this organization has valued stock in this way means in 2012 and in 2013 in the same way they have to value the stock that is closing stock. Financial statements can be analyzed and compared with the help of convention of consistency. Financial statements can be analyzed provided that depreciation on fixed assets is charged by using particular method year after year. Financial statements can be compared provided that unsold stock is valued by using particular method year after year. We have different types of consistency, vertical consistency, horizontal consistency and dimensional consistency. Vertical consistency that is, it is found within the group of interrelated financial statements of an organization on the same date. Here, vertical consistency occurs when fixed assets have been shown at cost price or it occurs when in interrelated income statement Depreciation has been charged on the historical cost of the asset. Horizontal consistency. This consistency is to be found between financial statements of one entity from one period to another period. Horizontal consistency helps in comparing the performance of different years. For example, comparing the performance of 2011 and 2012. Dimensional consistency. This consistency is to be found in the statements of two different 
business entities of the same period. For example, one business entity ABC Limited and another business entity XYZ Limited. These two business enterprises are compared or same methods are used and that helps in the comparison of these two units in one particular year that is 2011. Dimensional consistency assists in making comparison of the performance of one business entity with the other business entity in the same trade and on the same date. Here I have given you some example like one business entity Harsh Cashew Limited. From the name itself you can identify it is engaged in cashew business. Sita Cashew Limited, another business entity. It is also engaged in the same trade and in the same year. So comparison is possible with the help of convention of consistency principle. What are the significance of the consistency principle? It facilitates comparative analysis of the financial statements. It ensures uniformity in charging depreciation, uniformity in the valuation of closing stock. Next convention, convention of full disclosure. Convention of full disclosure requires that all material and relevant facts concerning financial statements should be fully disclosed. Every financial statement should fully disclose all relevant information. Full disclosure means that there should be full, fair and adequate disclosure of accounting information. Adequate means sufficient set of information to be disclosed. Fair means equitable treatment of users. Full means complete presentation of the information. For example, as per accounts, if net sales are shown for rupees 150,000 and the users want to identify what will be the gross sales, then this should be disclosed in the accounts. The interested parties want to know the amount of gross sales which may be 2 lakh and sales returns of rupees 50,000. Usually we have to prepare the sales with sales returns in the inner column and then in the outer column net sales will be disclosed. That is because of the full disclosure principle. Whatever details are available must be honestly provided in the accounts. Additional information should also be given in the financial statements. Basis of valuation of assets should be stated clearly in the balance sheet. Change in the method of depreciation, if any reserve is created, that should be disclosed in the trial balance or in the balance sheet. What all things should be fully disclosed? All transactions should be disclosed. Change in the accounting policies should be disclosed. Change in accounting methods should also be disclosed in the accounts. The Companies Act 1956 under Schedule 6 has provided a format for the preparation of the profit and loss account and balance sheet of the company. The regulatory bodies like SEBI, that is Securities and Exchange Board of India has also made compulsory for the complete disclosure by the registered companies. What is the significance of the convention of full disclosure? It helps in meaningful comparison of the financial statements of different business units. This can also help in the comparison of financial statements of different years of the same business unit. Convention of full disclosure helps investor and shareholder for making investment decisions and it helps in presenting reliable information. Next is the convention of materiality. This convention states that 
to make financial statements meaningful. Only material facts should be supplied to the users of accounting information. What are the material facts? That is important information, reliable information etc. can be considered as material facts. That is these information which will influence the decision of the user. These can be called as material facts. Materiality depends upon the nature and amount involved in that particular transaction. What are the significance of convention of materiality? It saves time, saves resources, reduces the error of calculation and makes financial statement meaningful. Next is the convention of conservatism. This convention is based on the principle that anticipate no profit but provide for all possible losses. It provides guidance for recording transactions in the books of accounts. Main objective of convention of conservatism is to show minimum profit. That is profit should not be overstated. If profit is shown more than the actual it may lead to distribution of dividend out of capital. That is capital will be reduced. If business anticipates any loss in the near future, provision should be made in the books of accounts. So profit should not be recorded until it is realized. If business anticipates loss, Provision should be made for it. Valuing closing stock at cost or market price, whichever is lower. That is done on the basis of convention of conservatism. Why we are creating provision for doubtful debt? Because of this convention, we are providing discount on debtors. We are writing off intangible assets, etc. The convention of conservatism is a useful tool in situation of uncertainty and doubts. What is the significance of convention of conservatism? It helps in ascertaining actual profit. It is useful in the situation of uncertainties and doubts. It helps in maintaining the capital of the enterprise. Listeners, now we have studied accounting conventions and moving to accounting standards. For this, we have to study generally accepted accounting principles. The term generally accepted means that these principles must have support and generally comes from professional accounting bodies. Generally accepted accounting principles refer to the rules adopted for recording business transactions of financial statements or guidelines GAAP GAP means the guidelines adopted for recording business transactions. Standard denotes a discipline and standard helps for evaluation. And it is providing as a guideline for financial statement preparation and it is a yardstick for preparing financial statements. Accounting standards are guidelines that means uniform practices that is followed by all organizations. In other words, I can say accounting standards are the general rule that is applicable to all corporate enterprises. Institute of Chartered Accountants of India that is ICAI constituted the Accounting Standards Board ASB in April 1977 for developing accounting standards. 
So, ICAI constituted ASB for developing accounting standards. The International Accounting Standards Committee was set up in 1973 with its headquarters in London. Accounting Standards Board is entrusted with the responsibility of formulating standards. Why they are formulating standards? Because they are formulating standards by considering the international developments and legal requirements in India. IASC has brought 40 accounting standards. Institute of Chartered Accountants of India has issued 29 accounting standards. First accounting standard AS1. It will disclose the accounting policies and this standard deals with the disclosure of significant accounting policies in the financial statements. Important accounting policies are disclosed in AS1. Valuation of inventories are measured in AS2 are specified in AS2. AS2 standard deals with the principles of valuing inventories for the financial statements. AS3 that is about the cash flow statement. This standard deals with the financial statement which summarizes for a given period the sources and applications of an enterprise. AS4 accounting standard 4 deals with contingencies and events occurring after the balance sheet date. So, AS4 deals with the treatment of contingencies and events occurring after the balance sheet date. Accounting standard 5, net profit or loss for the period, prior period items and changes in the accounting policies are mentioned in AS5. Accounting standard 5 deals with the treatment in financial statement of prior period and extraordinary items and changes in accounting policies. Accounting standard 6 does not apply to assets in the category of forests, wasting assets, plantations, similar natural resources etc. Accounting standard 7 that is accounting for construction contracts. Accounting standard 7 deals with accounting for construction contracts in the financial statement of contractors. Accounting standard 8 that is accounting for research and development. Accounting standard 8 deals with the treatment of cost of research and development in financial statements. Accounting standard 9 that is about revenue recognition. So, AS9 deals with the basis for recognition of revenue in the statement of profit and loss of an enterprise. Accounting standard 10 that is accounting for fixed assets. This standard deals with the recognition of fixed assets which is grouped under various categories like land, building, plant and machinery, vehicles, furniture and gifts, goodwill, patent etc. Accounting standard 11. Accounting for the effect of change in foreign exchange rate. Accounting standard 12. That is for government grants. Accounting for government grants are recorded in AS12. AS13 deals with or accounting standard 13 deals with accounting for investment. AS14 accounting standard 14 deals with accounting for amalgamation. Accounting for retirement benefit in the financial statement of employers is in accounting standard 15. AS 16 deals with borrowing cost. Accounting standard 17 that is about segment reporting. Accounting standard 18 it discloses related party disclosures. 
or it represents related party disclosures. AS 19 is about leases. Accounting standard 19 deals with the accounting treatment of transactions related to lease arrangements or lease agreements. Accounting standard 20 is about earnings per share. This standard deals with the presentation and computation of earning per share. Accounting standard 21 that is about consolidated financial statements and accounting standard 22 is about accounting for taxes on income. AS 23, accounting standard 23 that is for accounting for investment in associates in consolidated financial statements. And if there is any discontinued operations, it is disclosed in accounting standard 24. Accounting standard 25 is about interim financial reporting and accounting standard 26 is about intangible assets. Accounting standard 27, financial reporting of interest for joint venture. AS 28 deals with impairment of assets. Accounting standard 29 is about the provision for contingent liabilities and contingent assets. Dear learners, in this lesson we have studied about accounting conventions, convention of consistency, full disclosure, materiality, conservatism and we have got an idea relating to accounting standards also. Hope you understood this very well. Thank you.